so our next feature in Hal Prince musical is New Girl in Town. Ooh. 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 It's a New Girl in Town fans. So New Girl in Town uh, was a follow-up musical of sorts to Damn Yankees. And the show had the same producers, Hal, Robert Griffith, and Frederick Brisson, the same director and book writer, uh, George Abbott, the same choreographer, Bob Fosse, and the same star, Gwen Verdon. Um, and this, the Damn Yankees even moved um, out of the 46th Street Theater so that New Girl in Town could move in and it could open at the same space. Unlike Damn Yankees, the score of New Girl in Town was by a Broadway newcomer, Bob Merrill, who would go on to write hits like Funny Girl. The show was based on Eugene O'Neill's Anna Christie at a time when the great writer had just passed away. In fact, Long Day's Journey and Tonight premiered within the same year. O'Neill's Anna Christie was about a former prostitute trying to start a new life. This led Walter Kerr to write in the Herald Tribune, because New Girl in Town is a musical version of Anna Christie, there comes a moment when an enraged Matt Burke hurls Gwen Verdon to the floor and shouts, you slut, you dirty slut. The next song is a bright breezy reprise with soft shoe. <laughs> this juxtaposition troubles the show. <laughs> So because of the previous successes of the creators, New Girl in Town was sold out for its first few months on Broadway. And it wound up running for an entire year and was nominated for the Best Musical Tony Award. And New Girl's two female stars, Gwen Verdon and Thelma Ritter, tied for Best Actress in a Musical at the Tonys. Fosse also received acclaim for his choreography with the New York World Telegram calling it the season's best, fast, inventive, and bang on the button. <laughs> Definitely some good reviews, too. New Girl in Town has not been often seen since it closed on Broadway in 1958 and is considered dated in a way that many of Hal's other shows are not. The New York Post wrote, There was a time when the suspense of New Girl in Town seemed to consist of wondering how the libretto would manage to get Miss Verdon into her dancing. Even though the show did run, it was this type of evaluation that propelled Hal to strive to create shows with elements that were more seamlessly integrated for his next productions. And indeed, his next show was West Side Story. Here to speak about seeing New Girl in Town, a pal of Richard Mal a pal of Hal Prince, Richard Malpe Jr. <laughs> Uh, an undergraduate at Yale, and uh, in those days, I suppose you have to kind of say this, um, shows went out of town, and uh, they went mostly to Boston or Philadelphia, and before they went there, they went to New Haven and played the Schubert Theater for a week. A musical would open on a Saturday and play through the next Saturday, a play would open on Wednesday and play through Saturday and then go away. So um, I discovered that you could usher at the Schubert and see the show for nothing. And not only that, you got paid $7. So I got to see everything. And, and you could, I mean, I saw the first performance ever of My Fair Lady, Sound of Music, Long Day's Journey of the Night, um, uh, and Fiorello, and, um, and New Girl in Town. Um, New Girl in Town was not very good. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it several times, and it didn't get better. <laughs> and the sign of that is that I don't really remember very much about it. I remember three things, primarily. Um, there was, a, near the end of the first act, a song called The Big Check, the Big Check April Ball. A Check Apron Ball, which was a go-to-the-production-number crossover. And uh, Bob Fosse did the first of his traveling production numbers, where a small group of people would come in and sing the first A and get across the stage and leave, and another group would come in for the second A, and then they would keep coming, and the people would leave the stage and run around and come back again. So it seemed like the chorus was endlessly wonderful. Um, it was a very cute number and very, and, you know, very inventive. Exactly what Fosse would come up with when he didn't have any idea what to do. And um, interestingly enough, he stole the same idea for A Secretary is Not a Toy in, um, in uh, How to Succeed. And um, I think he thought nobody would notice. Um, <laughs> the, sec the second, I'll just say this, I have no idea why this is memorable, but I remember Thelma Ritter, someone said uh, that, um, Anna Christie, the lady, couldn't, 
couldn't get a boyfriend or something. And she said, why don't she carry a lantern? <laughs> Brought down the house. The funniest line ever. I think she got her Tony nomination on that line. I cannot fathom why it's funny. Um, the, there, there were two shortcomings that the show had. One was nobody noticed that Anna Christie doesn't have a story. <laughs> Nothing happens. She has, she's a prostitute, she tries to get her life together, nothing happens. The second thing, and this is what really, I think, killed it, at least in New Haven, Gwenford, as a prostitute, they didn't want that. She was Darling Eve from the, from the Garden of Eden Ballet, she was Lola, she was all that. Her first number, she comes out on stage, she swears and she tells this horrible story about how she's molested by all of her relatives. Um, and uh, you could just hear the audience go, <gasps> but don't take my word for it. Uh, you're going to hear that song. Right now. <laughs> and by great good fortune, it's going to be sung by my daughter. <laughs> Books in the barn with Uncle Jake. If you squeal, you get the rake on the farm. <laughs> 